Hello everyone, welcome to Target Focus Life. My name is Steve and today I have the redesigned Benelli M2 shotgun. If you want a detailed and in-depth review, let's go! We are under feet of snow in Minnesota, so I'm down here in South Georgia. Thomasville, Georgia, in fact, at ranges at Oakfield Shooting Range. Beautiful place. And I'm taking a look at the redesigned Benelli M2. Now the Benelli M2 has been out since the early 80s. And anything that's been out that long is due for an update. Including at, you. <laughs> including me? Come on, Jordan. I'm getting to be an old man. All right, it happens. So I know a lot of you really love the Benelli M2. And we're gonna take a look today, see what's changed. We're gonna put it through the full review. Another shotgun that Benelli updated was the Montefeltro. We'll do that in a different video, but big picture what happened is the Benelli M2 is becoming the price point model, where it was the Montefeltro. The Montefeltro was the cheapest semi-auto shotgun that Benelli offered. Now it's gonna be the M2. It's dropped a little bit in price, and the Montefeltro with its upgrades has stepped up a little bit in price. So let's take a look at the specs of this shotgun and then we'll break down what's different. Then we'll really put it through the paces, see what this gun's made of. So the MSRP of the M2 is $13.99, but I was able to pick it up for $11.99, I believe, at my favorite sporting good retailer. This is a 12 gauge, but the M2 is also offered in 20 gauge with 24, 26, or 28 inch barrels, three inch chamber, this gun tips the scale at six pounds, 12 ounces. For a semi-auto, 12 gauge is pretty light. Makes me curious on how it's gonna feel on the recoil. Length of pull, distance from the trigger to the butt end, 14 and 3 eighths. Now this has a micro cell recoil pad on it, different than their Comfort Tech system. And you can get various sizes of these. You gotta purchase them additionally, so you can change length of pull, make it a little bit longer if you need to. The drop at comb is one and three eighths, drop at heel is two and three eighths, so you have one inch drop right in that typical range for a field gun. Let's take a look at the trigger. This gun is six pounds, 12 ounces, so let's just, it does break as soon as I let it go. So I'm guessing it's about six and a half pound trigger. Not super crisp, a little sponge to it, but nothing, nothing that's too off-putting. Let's put it on the trigger scale. My guess was what, six and a half, I said? Uh, 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 break, break. Oh, six pounds, 10 ounces. Pull number two. Six pounds, 5.4 ounces. That's really close to my guess. Last one, get the average. Come on, come on. Be six pounds, three ounces. This is gonna be really close. Six pounds, 6.2 ounces. Nice trigger. Not too heavy. Could be a little bit lighter, but it's right in there. I like it. Rolling into ergonomics, this is where we're gonna talk about a lot of the changes in the Benelli M2. So they went away from the Comfort Tech stock. That was the one with the chevrons. I believe it had the soft comb on top, a little bit different butt pad. They reduced the price by going away from that a little bit. Now it has this micro cell, I believe they call it, recoil pad. They also have this air touch that's supposed to be better grip. Hard to compare if I don't have the other M2 side by side. I already reviewed the other M2, so you can always go check out that review, but I no longer have that shotgun, so can't do them side by side, sorry. It looks a lot the same as far as the grip texture, but the stock is definitely redesigned. The fore end, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but there's all sorts of raised channels, ribs. I kind of saw that, I thought that's gonna be really funky. We'll put it to the test when we shoot. I got about a box of shells through this so far, it's, it's shooting good. It does feel a little bit funky, but if you like to grip like this, I think it works pretty well. If you like to point a finger, not so well. So take that into account how you grip a shotgun. I really like to point, try to line my finger up with that barrel, just my personal preference. The fore end cap is redesigned. I really like it. It has these channels cut out, really easy just to get a hold of it, twist it. We'll break this apart here in a little bit. The receiver is fully redesigned. You can see that looks a little bit more like an ethos receiver has a nice cutout here. I think it'll be easier to ramp shells in. We'll look at that when I'm loading shells. The bolt release is now this nice pill design, as Jordan called it. I think it was a round button before. The bolt handle has been redesigned, which is completely adequate. The only thing I found is taking this gun apart. It's really challenging to get this bolt handle design out. The bolt is updated to their latest bolt. I don't recall the name, doesn't really matter. 
supposed to be better performing. We'll see, the M2 is already a pretty reliable gun. I like here, they got the red follower in the magazine. Nice red follower. Safety is still a cross bolt safety. I don't think much changed with that. Red fiber on the front, I could do without that of course, no big deal. Stepped up rib, vented rib. I think it looks better. I, I think it looks more modern. I like the looks of it. I'm pretty okay with the feel of it. I need a little bit longer length of pull. Yeah, I like how it mounts. It's pretty decent. If I was using this as a duck hunting gun, I probably wouldn't want a longer length of pull because obviously I'll probably have more clothes on unless I'm down here in South Georgia because it's a lot hotter down here. The M2 comes with three choke tubes, the Benelli Cryo choke tubes, improved cylinder modified full. It also comes with a shim kit. So you can add the shims right here, adjust drop and cast. I like that. I've already went ahead and replaced those choke tubes with this Carlson Sporting Clay choke tube, ported choke tube, but I think it'd be super cool if we came out with a TFL choke tube. What do you think? That'd be cool? Comment below, let us know. So overall, just looking at this gun, I think they're really great changes. I'm pretty happy with it, especially if it's got a little bit more affordable. Great gun for the money so far, but we gotta shoot. So let's get to that. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is recoil and reliability. Let's just fire off a few shots, look at recoil. It's got a decent amount of recoil, although I did take it directly back into the shoulder, felt pretty good. But I'm only shooting ounce and an eighth, 1200 feet per second. I'm not shooting heavy loads, these are just target loads. And it's punching pretty good. It is a lighter gun, it is inertia. You might expect a little bit heavy recoil, but no big deal on these target loads. But I got some black cloud, ounce and a quarter there. We'll shoot in just a second. Let's see how it shoots from the hip. Huh, it brought the shell into the chamber, but did not fire. Let's try that again. You can outshoot some of these inertia guns. I have realized that shooting Benelli over the years. I can too shoot too fast for it. Let's go fast. See that? Don't have a lot of rounds through this gun. Just a little over a box. No problem when I go slow. Let's try to go fast again. There we got off all three. I think we're breaking it in a little bit here. See how it works over the head. Yes, I know you don't shoot over the head. This lets us just see how reliable it is. Will it cycle? Didn't pick that third shell up. I'm not totally surprised. Inertia guns, target loads, upside down, not the greatest combination. But I would say the Benelli Super Black Eagle 3 does a better job than most inertia guns. Got both those shells out. We're gonna get the black cloud out, shoot some waterfowl loads, pull, pull. It's got some pretty decent recoil compared to a gas gun, compared to a little heavier gun. But I would say it's right in the range of what you would expect out of a gun that weighs this, that's inertia. At least it was directly back in the shoulder for the most part. So reliability wise, I think it's right in line with what you would expect out of a 12 gauge inertia shotgun, right? It's gonna work well from the shoulder. It's not gonna work so well necessarily upside down or from the hip, which means when it gets dirty, you might have some issues as well. Although these guns don't uh, typically get as dirty, inertia guns, but nonetheless, you get build up in the bolt, in the receiver, it's not gonna operate as well. I wouldn't be too concerned with what I'm seeing out of this. I'm not as reliable as some of those gas guns I shoot, but hey, if you like inertia, you like the simplicity, as we break this down, you'll see it is a simple gun. Why don't we get to that now? Let's go ahead and break this gun down real quick. See what we're working with. See what's changed. Four end cap, to my recollection, is different. I like the design, very cool. The barrel and forend will come off just like that. That's a little toasty. Trigger out. Now, here's where I've struggled. There's nothing really good to grab a hold of this bolt handle, and I have not been able to remove one of these by hand. So unlike the Ethos or Super Black Eagle 3, the receiver is one part receiver. Thank you, sir. It is a one part receiver. It doesn't break down into two pieces. 
like a, a lot of inertia models, very simple. Recoil springs in here, so nothing to worry about on there. For that, I do love the inertia shotguns. I'm just feeling the stock. It does feel different. That must be the air touch that they're talking about. Simple bolt. I wish I had the original M2 to compare side by side. I think that would have been helpful. Yes, Steve, that would have been helpful. I know. So very simple to take apart, very simple to put back together. I like it. All right, so we gotta put it to the test. Everything on the clock. How quick can I mount? How quick can I shoot? What's the recoil like? What's the pointability like? All figured out right here with speed shooting. Now the original M2 I shot in 1.08, that's super fast. It's beginning to rain, so we gotta get to it. Oh, I missed the last one. That was a 1.19. Far cry from 1.08 though. Ooh, baby. That was fast. I did cheat a little bit. 0.18 and 0.17 splits. Seems about right for inertia shotgun. Ooh. I might have thrown just a hair early there. Yeah, that was early. That was legit. Took me a little while to get on it. I'd say that was about a 0.9 to get on it. Yeah, 0.89. I was 1 one hundredth of a second off and 0.19 split, so a total time of 127. Those are quick splits. I wasn't the fastest to get on it. That's a 118. Yeah, it took me 0.84 to get on it, but I had a 0.6 split. That's about as fast as I've shot the Benelli, any of the Benelli guns, I think. It was a 0.16 and a 0.18 total time of 118. Did it again. The shell is in the chamber. I don't know if it's not going fully into battery or what's happening. When I try to go as fast as I can, I'm out running it from time to time. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is how they redesigned the trigger guard. You can actually run it kind of almost right down the trigger guard. Almost. Right down the trigger. It's not, it doesn't work extremely well, but it is rather easy just to slap shells in there and load them. Some gun companies make a ramp. This really isn't designed to be a ramp. It doesn't appear to be, but super easy to load. It was slow to get on them. It was good splits, 0 0.17, 0 0.18 splits. That was a 117 actually. So that is my fastest score. It felt slow. Yeah, it was a 16 and a 1.9 split. I'll live with that 1.6. 1.9 is a little slow, 0.82 to get on them. I got a few more tries, then I'm done. That was my last try and I was running pretty good. Here's my conclusion from speed shooting. Performance, I don't think it's any better or worse than the prior M2. I'm running into some of the same issues where I'm actually outrunning the gun. It goes into the chamber, but no bang. Um, the struggles I had with speed shooting is just rhythm with trigger. I'm sure I could overcome that getting used to it. I'm sure I could get this down to a 1.08 but that requires me to have a perfect throw, perfect time and everything come together. And I'm tired and I'm sweating. This South Georgia heat, I'm used to layers of clothes and 20 degrees outside. Really like the changes on the Benelli M2. I think it was time for an update. I like the update. I like that this is their most affordable semi-auto now. I can't wait to get a hold of the Montefeltro and make a video on that. Would love to hear your thoughts on the Benelli M2. Is this the new Coke? New Coke, what do you mean by that? Well, a while back, Coke, I think this is in the late 80s, early 90s, Coke came out with the new Coke and people were outraged because they loved the old Coke. Don't mess with our Coke. Is this the same thing? Is anyone gonna be mad that Benelli redesigned the M2? Now granted, you don't consume shotguns like you consume Coke, Coca-Cola that is, but would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think of the redesigned Benelli M2? I like it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.